Hey everybody, how's it going? Hey there, little fern with a cute little pug dog, uh, or bulldog actually, emote. Thanks for kicking off our chat. Hi, Zippity. Anyway, um, today is a crochet day stream. I'm doing some pretty casual stuff since I slept in too long today and then just kind of like woke up in a scramble of like, I better go do my stream. Um, so here we are. Uh, I ended up skipping streaming yesterday. Hey, thank you for the resub, um, Apelica Trox. It's for 13 months. Cool. Thank you so much. Do we have... <laughs> I keep forgetting to, like, check on my emotes before each stream. Please give me emotes. No, nope, they're still pending. One of these days, eventually, the emotes will come home from the war. Hello, Not The Lid and other people who are just now joining us. So today's a crochet day stream. Pretty basic. Um, I have a hood here that is along the same lines as the one I was making a few weeks ago, except I've updated the pattern to be like my own original pattern now. Uh, the emotes that we have lined up, Katie Cat, is a, um, we have a cottage emote as well as um, a hype emote that's like fairy dust bursting out of a bottle. And so I think those will be really cute once they're finally available eventually. So I got to a point with this hood where I like ran out of yarn for what I was doing. I'm gonna swap my views here. Yay, overhead view. That's better. Yay, light, let there be light. <laughs> okay, so I am basically gonna swap colors and start using this one. I also have an additional whole ball of this yarn, so if I run out of this one, I've got more. But yesterday I spent pretty much the entire day cleaning up this room, which you might not even be able to tell because it probably just looks messier behind me now, but um, I definitely cleaned out some boxes and moved a bunch of stuff around and got it much more organized, so. I'm really happy to be at a place where it's now becoming even more functional and awesome. And this poor, sad, flaccid ball of yarn is gonna get used up today. <laughs> but, how to begin? All right, so I am working my way in this direction, adding more rows onto this section. I have some other projects like laying around here. Hi there, Mythic Phoenix. <laughs> I'm Geeky Trash. Uh, welcome today. I'm going to start another knot. I don't even remember. I don't remember. Sometimes you just get to see me like learn how to do what I'm doing on stream <laughs> along with everybody else. And at least start with a little knot. Hiya, Jellosaur. Anyway, it was not my intention to sleep until like noon or whatever, but then I accidentally did and then I was like scrambling to get stuff done this morning, but I uh, took care of some business. I did my errands, at least. <laughs> at least I got that far before um, hopping onto the stream. Hi there, Ariel Weavers is asking, what am I working on? I am making another hood. Um, I'm about to swap yarn colors, just in step two, and then I will continue as though nothing has changed into making more rows with this yarn. What was I doing? Yeah, half doubles. Okay, cool. All right, I got my pattern done. <laughs> Finally. So yeah, today has just been like me kind of scrambling to catch up. Uh, yeah, these are half doubles rather than doubles, Mr. Benjamin Leaf. Um, it's been a pretty lazy day so far. Aries is up behind me, I think, in the window. Yeah. He's, if you can see him, right there. 
in the far background. Aries has graced us with his presence, but he's not hes not ready to hang out with the stream right now. He's uh, busy observing her yard <laughs> and making sure that um, there's no intruders, I assume. I've seen like stray cats running through the yard before, so I can only hope that that's what he's on the lookout for. Oh yeah, thank you to those of you who have joined so far. Hi there, Isolde Rion and Jellosaur says that they're not familiar with crafts or fabric, but this is comforting to watch. I'm really glad to hear that. That's kind of the idea. Um, you know, it's cool if people are interested in the crafts or if they're working along at home, but ultimately the whole goal of this is just to like hang out and have some comfort time with a, a chill group of people. So thank you for being here. If that's a what you're up to today. All right, and I'm just gonna continue the same pattern that um, was already, already existed down here, and now I am swapping over to this other yarn. But yeah, uh, yesterday I did a lot of work. Oh, Ariel Reaver's got some new felting needles. That's awesome, heavy duty ones. Need to get some of those. Also, uh, Artful Jackalope is here. Nice to see you. Looks like a lot of people here are learning to crochet or talking about their ongoing projects, which is always really fun. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to be making a lot of progress in my space behind me and getting more and more functional every day in terms of like being able to get back to making more ambitious projects. Um, maybe getting back into costuming, um, both for myself and for others, as well as just, uh, you know, trying to get my life together as always. <laughs> I'm doing okay. Hi there, Retro Gamer Kevin. Welcome to the chat. This is a pretty mindless stitch at this point where I'm just kind of going to keep it going. But that's part of the joy of being able to multitask on stream and like hang out and chat with people without having to be uh, distracted by what I'm doing. Hi, Stealth Slug. Um, Zippity Zoo is asking what time I went to sleep last night. Uh, like a normal time, like 1 a.m. I was tweeting about Aries under his blankie. I think so it wasn't like I even stood up stayed up super late it's just uh, been I don't know kind of weird getting back onto a schedule oh, I'm also planning on changing my um, streaming schedule because I was struggling to do the evening streams on Thursdays I basically decided that starting next week my schedule will be like Monday through Thursday and I'll have Friday off because I think that will help me be a little bit more consistent so I haven't updated it yet, um, but just a heads up, next week I'll do this type of stream on a Thursday rather than a Friday, because that'll help me start earlier too. I have a kind of weekly hangout with one of my friends, and so we're adjusting that too to allow for my streaming. But yeah, it's really nice to be able to have people around you to keep getting stuff done, and so I've been doing that both through streaming and in real life and hanging out with people that um, are encouraging me to keep building my business and my um, workspace. And so I've been making a lot of progress in that, on that front. I did go and get my coffee this morning. So hopefully, or this afternoon, <laughs> hopefully that'll help me um, have some energy to get through this stream. Super secret slug says this is such a chill way to spend an afternoon oh my goodness do we have a super secret slug and a stealth slug and those are not the same person <laughs> are you two gonna have to like battle now for the who is the most the most stealthy or secretive of the slugs i'm just like very curious how this <laughs> trend began slug it out says zippity Hey there, Plague Bearer. And Ariel Reavers says that hanging out with friends and just working on your own stuff always gets me motivated. That's how I feel. That's why I stream. <laughs> mm 
Anyway, what are the odds that we have two secret agent slugs in one chat room? What are the odds? <laughs> now I'm just like watching this drama unfold in the chat. Anyway, I decided to, I actually got dressed and went out. I had to go to the post office to um, drop off some packages. And then when I got home, I was like, it's actually pajama time again. So these are not the pajama pants that I was wearing earlier. I didn't sleep in these. I put them on fresh and clean when I got home because I was like, it's a pajama day. So sometimes, you know, sometimes you just have to make the executive decision to stay cozy rather than just doing it out of laziness. <laughs> Today was PJ day at your kid's school. Well, we're just doing an extension of that. I might not be a school child, but every day is pajama day if you believe in it hard enough. The slug is the most subtle of all creatures. I respect your choice of name. Super Secret Slug also says they've had their username going on 15 years. So we have some like veteran stealthy slugs here, <laughs> here in the chat. What are the odds? Wow. The respect is mutual. Okay, good. I'm glad that there's been a peaceful resolution to the um, brief slug rivalry <laughs> among our chat. Um, no, the lid says cozy is just the right call whenever possible. Hey, thank you. Uh, Farron Wolf just subbed with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much. I am happy, uh, to keep growing our community. We just passed a hundred subs last stream. And so now I think we've got like one three or something like that. Um, now that we've got new, new, uh, new subs. So thank you guys so much for your support and for joining and hanging out with us. Oh, heck yes. Uh, a Petty just arrived home from work. Um, you hear it's pajama day, so I'm shedding my work pants for pajama pants. Done, LOL. Good for you. Good for you. I support this decision wholeheartedly. Leaving the biggest slime trail between, uh, between our slug brethren. <laughs> That's snail trail. Farron Wolf, thank you. I'm glad that you, I'm also happy that you could catch a stream live and come chill with us. I hear cat noises behind me. Yep, there he is. Aries, where are you going? He's going out. <laughs> I guess he wasn't in the mood for streaming today. That's fine, I respect that. You know, sometimes I feel that. He's just making his rounds, that fluffy boy. But yeah, it's been a nice chill week here in our household without too much going on. Hi, Navita Luna. I'm just amazed that we now have a slug community here in the chat room. If, we, if anybody out there is like watching and hasn't made their Twitch username yet for whatever reason, if you're just like lurking in the background, I would like to personally challenge you to, to create a slug username in the same vein and join this community. <laughs> slug lurking. The craft room looks different from this angle. Well, it's the same angle. <laughs> I, um, I moved some stuff around. I used to have, um, a clothing rack that was kind of like sticking out into the middle of the room because otherwise it blocks a closet, closet door. So I'm still, uh, figuring out the placement of some things, but it's getting to be a lot easier to navigate the space in here and a lot more functional in terms of like, uh, using my space creatively and wisely. Slurking, oh my gosh. Slug lurking is slurking, if you will. Jeez. <laughs> I, I'm really happy about this. Well, thank you guys. I was worried that my room was just gonna look messier behind me and everyone was gonna be like, what are you talking about? It looks like you just made a bigger mess. And there is still a lot of stuff that's like 
out on tabletops and things. But it's um, much, much cleaner on the floor. And I emptied some boxes out. There's still, I still have one moving box left and it's full of paperwork. So I actually need to buy like a specific, I don't have a filing cabinet anymore. So like a file box or filing cabinet so that I can put my paperwork away. But otherwise I've basically emptied all of the boxes. <laughs> it only took me like three quarters of a year. Isolde Rian says they're going to lose their craft room when they have a baby in a few months. I mean, that's a pretty cool reason to... You're making room for another human. That's kind of neat. Good luck with all of that. Um, Geeky Trash says, Crafty Times isn't always about organization times. <laughs> Your fabric stash is out of control. I recently got a bunch of plastic bins and put my fabric away folded inside the bins. So it's like organized by type. Uh, I got cottons in one, polyester in another, silk in another, etc. And um, I'm really excited about it because not only is it much more easy to dig through now, but it's also going to be really simple to move because it's already boxed up. I just grab the boxes and go. So. Getting that, uh, getting that stuff set up is really nice. Everybody else is chiming in with how many unpacked boxes they have still left in their house. So that makes me feel a little bit less guilty about <laughs> not having emptied everything out when I moved in. You know, it takes a while. I was also in a weird, I mean, I've been in a weird transition phase in my life for a while. And so my packing was very, very haphazard. And I also didn't, just wasn't very organized in life um, back then anyway, because I was going through a bunch of stuff. And so I finally, um, I'm just doing a lot better in like, in terms of my own responsibility and like caretaking of both myself and my space. I feel like that's been one of the biggest ways that I've leveled up over the past year. So, um, basically I went from a situation where, you know, everything in my craft room was already cluttered and then I packed it up in a huge rush where I was just like trying to get my stuff out and together and out as quickly as possible. And so it was very, very haphazard and then getting into a smaller space where I suddenly had to go through it all and reorganize it all after arriving. And so that's what I did for like months after I moved in here was just go through my life, downsize, organize, and I'm still doing that, but I'm finally at a point where I see tons and tons of progress. And that's really exciting because it's like, this is a new chapter and it, it really feels like it now because I, I walk into my craft room or just my house in general. And it's like, it's so much more put together, clean, organized, functional than it ever has been in the past. Um, and the fact that I was able to do this while living alone is a really big level up for me. So that's a, something that I'm celebrating. Oh, I forgot to update the discord. Hold up. I'm going to ping my discord because I always like forget to do that. Whalefax wants to start crocheting. That's what the discord's for. They can help you out and give you all of the instructions. I love how many people in our discord community are like learning new crafts that they didn't already do. Crochet day. Got it. It has been updated. Okay, I know I missed some comments and stuff, so let me scroll here. Howdy from Canada says I'm a deer. Glad you could finally catch the stream. Always like to catch the notifications. Well, I'm glad you're here too. Uh, Plague Bear says that they really like the mauve. It is kind of mauve. I would say that's a fair, that's a fair color assessment. <laughs> um, and Geeky Trash and Plague Bear both said Mythic Phoenix of all 
encouraged me with my cleaning and organizing. So thank you guys so much. I'm really happy to be at a new stage in life where it's all coming much more easily to me now. You know, sometimes you just gotta break out of old habits and establish something new for yourself. And I'm like, I'm getting there in a way that feels really good. Whale facts should find a whale pattern. Yes, you should. I would love to see you crochet a little whale. That seems like it would be extremely on brand for you. Plague Bear says, it's not easy to take care of your space and yourself at the same time, especially when you're not in a great headspace. That is for sure true. And I feel like that was the big theme of like the latter half of um, 2019 for me. It was just like leveling up in all of that regard. Like uh, going from, be well, being in a poor headspace for a lot of it already, but then um, pushing through that and making a better life for myself is something that I am really satisfied with. So it's still in progress. I'm not completely there yet, but um, every day I'm working on it and I feel really proud of my progress. And so, you know, that's the best that any of us can do, I imagine. Okay, I'm gonna briefly slap this on my head. I'll give you a face cam view of that. I'm not even gonna take my hat off because I have sleepy hat hair. <laughs> so I was debating on whether or not I want to continue the slant or whether I want to start doing a straight across here. Basically trying to determine if I want this pink, the mauve section to um, go lower or whether it was, um, or to keep it like, to make it level out across the bottom now. I guess that would make sense to have it level out and I can always add more rows onto the bottom, which is what I did with my last one. I'm actually glad I'm doing this on stream because now I can get like back in side views of what I'm working on. What do you guys think? <laughs> uh, Goop Do says, can I just say as a seamster that yarn workers are braver than any of us Marines? <laughs> well, <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> Trimel wants to learn how to crochet. Do it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Dark Danksven says doing something creative with your kitties nearby always helps. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm really proud of, I'm proud. I was just reading Simnels' comment. I'm really happy with these yarn colors. I think this is a, this is a solid wool yarn. Um, this blue, it's like a light blue that has um, pink like woven into it. So this is a bluish pink and now I am swapping that for a pink with blue in it. So I actually really like the way that these two colors work together and it's even more subtle than is really visible on camera, but I'm liking it. Plague Bear likes the length as is. Trimel likes the slant. Ah, <laughs> you like the angled look. Yeah, it's been, I've been keeping it angled, but now I'm like, do I wanna, do I wanna continue the angle or not, is the question. Put it back on one more time. But yeah, I do like the slant. I'm just trying to decide if it needs to go, to keep slanting down and go lower in the front or whether or not it can be now flattened out at this rate. It will be, I'm adding, I'm gonna add more length this way. So this is gonna be wider and longer. I'm still adding more rows to it, but it's like, have I reached the terminal point in the front or not? I don't know. Is this being attached to something? Nope, it's a free, free hood, free sitting hood. It's just gonna hang out on my head. And I'm getting my yarn a little bit tied up, but hopefully not too much. Let it go down a little longer. That's what several people have said. You like the slant if it's just a free hood? Okay, 
Well, I am happy with that feedback. I agree. We're just gonna keep making it go slanty. <laughs> All right, um, so before I, now that I've made that decision, before I do my turning stitch, I will add an extra half double crochet in this last slot, because that's how you keep this slant going, is just by adding another stitch every single time. All right. Thanks for helping me make that decision. That's why it's fun to crochet with uh, other people around. <laughs> this is a solid ASMR, says Dankspin. That's the idea, I'm glad that you uh, approve. I hope that you're in enjoying this. I like, I enjoy having a crafty community of people who are like also doing their own little works. So also, yeah, if you're, if you're sitting there crocheting your own thing, please feel free to share your progress and your, your thoughts with us on your projects. Um, but also at the same time, it's like, you don't have to be crafting along to enjoy this, I hope. So I'm always pleased to hear it when people are like, just using this as a way to relax and like have a little background noise and people to hang out with, um, even if you're not personally invested in the project. Uh, that's one of my goals, so. Yeah, it's easy to go back and redo things instead of unraveling the whole thing, says Puina. And hello, Puina. Thank you for joining us. Nice to see you. I remember to do the Discord ping a little late, but I got there. Oh no. Did I? I'm working on the slant. <laughs> Let me go back. Am I? I feel like this stitch got a little bit twisted and so I was working in the wrong holes. <laughs> wrong hole! <laughs> that needs to be an emote, the wrong hole emote, because it happens. It happens. <laughs> um. Katie Cat is nearly done with the back of your sweater. It's the first big project milestone. You're a little nervous. Don't be nervous. It's awesome. That's congratulations. That's cool that you've met a uh, you've met a milestone. But always remember, you can redo things. You can undo things. You're the one who did it to begin with, so you can do it again. Sometimes I have to remind myself that when I get nervous about like being halfway through a project that I really like, and then I'm like, no, don't mess it up. The truth is. I can mess it up. I can mess it up and redo it, and that's okay. I, f I have the high energy this time that I wanted last time. Well, yeah, because I just woke up and was rushing around and drinking, chugging my coffee to be like, hey, I gotta get to my stream. So, you know, I do have my energy back up. I'm glad. <laughs> it's kind of nice. All right, so this is the right hole, and now I'm doing the correct row of stitches. And I do really like how these colors have blended together. Like I said, there's pink in the blue and there's blue in the pink. Um, so the two different types of yarns work really well together. Hi, travel some welcome. Isolde Rion is fixing up the wedding gown that was never finished. That's fun. Um, I didn't have a wedding gown, which in ret retrospect, that's great. Cause that's just one less thing that I had to uh, remember. But um, if I ever get married again, maybe I'll do my own thing. I have trans rights yarn. Oh my gosh, that's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> Not, I don't know. I guess, I guess the, the trans flag already has those colors and the way that they kind of blend. It's a spectrum. That's right. It's not just solid pink or blue, it's a spectrum. The pinks and the blues are mingling. You got a little bit of blue in your pink. You got a little bit of pink in your blue. And I think that's beautiful. Shy Turtle, welcome. You also love the colors. I'm glad. Me too. Yes. <laughs> Mythic Phoenix is doing a knitting project. That's exciting. When you originally started eons ago, it was going to be a scarf and then you made it too wide. So now you're going to turn it into a shoulder bag or something, or you can make it into a really giant scarf or whatever. I mean, yeah, do your thing. Go wild. Make your, make your scarf into a bag, make your bag into a scarf. Only you can choose its destiny. Hey, 
Coffee in the morning, in the afternoon, when writing my books for me, and beer at night, says Dank Sven. The beer tends to make your writing crazier. Yeah, <laughs> I used to enjoy my evening beers too. I have, I stopped drinking a while ago. Um, not that I wouldn't anymore, but I just, it was like extra calories and money that I didn't need uh, to spend or, <laughs> or take in. Um, but I used to craft with a beer in hand pretty frequently and then I would occasionally get to a point where I was like, okay, I need to call it quits for the night before I make a mistake and I <laughs> can't undo. That's how you ended up with a nine foot scarf, says Plague Bearer. I mean, go wild. Make your scarves nine feet long. No one can stop you. Just keep wrapping it around your neck. Build a wall, a wall of scarf to block out the haters. That's a good attitude. That's right. Just keep, keep crocheting, crochet a wall around your face so that, you know, the haters can't get to you or whatever. <laughs> Stealth Slug has their dog to keep them company. That's good. I wonder if Aries will come back and join me again. I think he went to an upstairs window because it's prime window watching hours. Um, now that it's, it's almost 3 p.m. in my time zone and the sun tends to set by like 4.30. So he's only got a limited amount of watching window watching hours, so. Gotta respect that choice. Someone should get on a line of crocheted weapons. That would be interesting if ineffective. <laughs> crocheted armor, heck yes. I know that some people have done like metallic crochet for um, like chain mail. I don't know what stitch you would use for that. Some kind of basic repetitive stitch. Crochet would be perfect to make faux chain mail, says Trimo. Yeah. You know, I have some silver yarn. I'm gonna have to hold on to it for that. Okay, this is my my second ball of yarn. I haven't trimmed off because I wanna be able to use it to um, as this keeps growing and more rows get added, this is this is going to be stitched along the bottom of that. So for now, my extra yarn is just like hanging out attached and will hopefully not create a big mess. You've seen crocheted sweaters made to look like plate armor. That's a great idea. Um, I got one of those like fake armor hoodies for my ex-husband uh, that I'll never see again, <laughs> but it wasn't as high quality in person as it looked online. So I guess I'll just have to make my own if I want one. Ever seen those knit slash crocheted hats that look like Viking helmets complete with a beard? I have. Those are pretty cute. I would definitely, I would, I would make mine into like a dwarf beard and have a big old orange beard hanging from my crocheted hat. Amadir says it's all dreary outside. It's super dreary here too. When I went out for coffee and post office purposes. It was just like grossly windy and dark and wet. There's supposed to be a little group photo shoot this weekend. I've talked about it on stream and I was going to go, but now that we ha we're supposed to have like a 90% chance of rain tomorrow, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I would love to make it just in general to meet people and chat with people, but not if there's a 90% chance of rain, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. You can also use knitted sweaters to mimic the drape of mail for painting reference. That's a cool idea. Yeah, because it's basically like knit metal or crocheted metal. That's That reminds me, um, I was talking about wire crochet, another stream not too long ago, and I, as I was cleaning yesterday, 
put together a bunch of wire um, that I found and I finally have a little wire bin that's organized. So maybe if I finish this project and I'm like looking around for what else I can crochet today, I will grab that and try doing some metal, metal crochet. Maybe I'll discover an easy way to make chain mail for myself. I've recently seen, um, it's been going around, uh, people doing foam fake chain mail. And there's some really cool, cool tutorials by like prop artists on Twitter. Um, Down in Creative Studio was posting about it, is who was on my mind. But that's a really cool um, effect that you can try out if you're looking for a chain mail, a fake chain mail technique. Um, I was just really impressed by that. I would love to try that out myself. Katie Cat says, if I can make a whole cosplay out of crochet, I don't think I'd ever do anything else. I used to follow this woman who would exclusively make duct tape cosplays. And every single piece of the costume, except for like the wig, she would all she would just only work with duct tape, and that was like her gimmick. And I thought it was really creative and, and funny. Um, I don't know if I still follow her, because uh, it was so many years ago. But maybe you can just Google duct tape crochet lady, <laughs> or no, duct tape cosplay lady. Maybe you'll still find it. Um, but she had like relatively complex outfits for being just duct tape and that was kind of the point where she was putting in like uh you know a nice amount of effort into her costumes but like intentionally limiting herself to only using duct tape and it was kind of cool like i thought it was very cute uh, and she would do like little appliques and designs and stuff and it was all like the quality like colored duct tape so once again it wasn't like a lack of effort it was an intentional <laughs> effort that was um, done as like a gimmick and I just thought that was really cute. Now Shy Turtle is just on a Google rabbit hole of how to make chain mail with all these different ways. You know, I was, I have that silver yarn that I was holding on to and not sure what I wanted to do with it. I think I might have found my purpose is doing some soft, lightweight crochet chain mail. Cause that's uh, one of the most uncomfortable things about wearing chain mail is just the heaviness of it. So like with cosplay, there's always a, a struggle <laughs> between wanting to be accurate versus wanting to be comfortable. Um, and so some people who don't, un who don't cosplay will make comments like, oh, you why don't you make it out of metal? Why don't you do real armor? And the, the cosplayer who hears that question, most of us are like, that sounds terrible. Like I'm thinking about functionality. I'm thinking about walking around a con, etc. So, um, you know, s some people do it and it's all, it's really impressive when, when you're able to do it, but, uh, it, there's definitely like a spectrum between like how comfortable do I want to be versus how like hardcore and accurate do I want to be about this? And so, um, you know, people do wear real chain mail with, uh, with cosplay, but it's usually at the, at the sacrifice of their own personal comfort and maneuverability and stuff. So, um, being able to wear chain mail, fake chain mail that's super lightweight and maneuverable is a, a really great thing for cosplayers. It's something that people are excited about. Yes, uh, A. Petty is uh, saying that the the foam stuff looks just like an interlaced cutout. I wonder if you could use your Cricut to recreate that. Yes, search for Downen Creative Studio. She is a cosplayer out of Portland, I think. A very talented lady who um, released a pattern, a free pattern for use on Cricut. So you can get that straight from her and uh, replicate those results. Tremel says their dad owns a male shirt and it's super, super heavy. Yeah, I, I don't doubt it. I missed some comments in the chat, I'm sure, but thanks for hanging out and talking with me. It's moving so fast. Uh, 
The real chainmail looks and feels amazing. The sounds it makes really makes you feel like a knight. I can imagine that. I would probably really enjoy feeling like a knight for like one hour and then I would just be exhausted and miserable. <laughs> Your dad has real chain mail that he's loaded up for plays and one of the people that wore it had to wear shoulder pads underneath in order to bear the weight. Yeah, that's not surprising. I think that's a pretty common thing. You wanna wear padding underneath it. Now. Is this stitch too tight for me to shove my little <laughs> needle through it? Oops. That was the correct hole, but there's still some innuendo to be found. Okay. This is actually all fine, but I need to stitch where? I think I'm just getting so this is an additional row that's going on the side. That's why this still is attached. Now I'm just like talking my way through my decision making for, for my own benefit mostly. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. There's a little bit of a space there, but I'll fix it up. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Kitty27 is asking a question, um, would anyone have a good ideas for how to make Fragile's umbrella from Death Stranding? Um, I don't, I'm not familiar with that design, but if you feel like asking our Discord community, there is a whole channel there dedicated to the question, how do I make this? And whatever, whatever it is that you're making, um, you can pop in there and ask your question and people will often, oh, thank you Puina for, um, providing the link to our Discord down below. But uh, you can ask, your, pose your question in the Discord, and there are usually several helpful people will rush to your <laughs> to to give you an answer, and I'll be able to take a look at it after the stream and see if I have any input as well. All right, next row. We're moving along in this world creating new rows for ourselves. There's so much good uh, chain mail advice now in this chat room. I uh, have never worn chain mail or made it. It's very impressive and it looks cool. I'm always like amazed that people, I've had some friends who like spend their time actually creating the real hardcore chain mail. Uh, and it's always very impressive to see that done, but I've never attempted it myself. So, maybe that's something for my future projects. Cool, Kitty, I hope you find your answer that you're looking for there. And like I said, maybe after the stream I can take a look at the design and see if I have any input for you. But regardless, I feel like that Discord is going to be a good resource for finding people to help you answer that question. Mythic Phoenix says their brother makes really awesome chain mail jewelry. That is really cool. Yeah, I have a friend who does chain mail and scale mail jewelry and accessories. Um, that stuff is always really fun. Level 9,999 Prinny says, hello, you started watching some of my crafting videos? Well, thank you and feeling inspired. Thank you so much, Prinny. I'm glad to hear that. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is my goal to just share that with anybody who wants to stick around and enjoy it with me. So it's always very reassuring to hear people say that they feel inspired by the community, through the streams or the, the archive videos. That's what I like to hear.
Well, now that we're on this topic, I'm like even more eager to try my hand at crocheting metal. I guess I could take a break from this if I feel like it. We're not even one hour in and I'm like, I want to crochet something else now. <laughs> Somewhere you have a picture of your cat wearing your brother's work in progress chainmail dice bag like a coif. You should definitely post that in the Discord if you find that picture. That sounds like an intersection of many uh, interests that we have there. So many projects and so little time. Isn't that always the conundrum? <clears throat> I need my coffee. <laughs> I swear I talk more on stream than I do at like any other point in my day-to-day <laughs> -day life. So I always end up getting like a dry throat or whatever. But that's okay. This is good for me. I'm always... Sometimes it's like a struggle just to put myself out there, but uh, I'm really grateful that this streaming habit that I've developed has become so um, helpful for me on a personal level. Oh, I have water. I have water right next to my coffee. I'm just choosing to drink <laughs> the coffee instead. So that's entirely on me. Your husband wears chainmail and plate armor to the Ren Fair. Oof, that sounds like an exhausting way to spend the day. But I get it. I mean, I'm a cosplayer. I've worn some incredibly uncomfortable things for fun, so. <laughs> Cool. Hey, Petty, let us know how your chainmail, um, your foam cricket chainmail turns out, because I'm curious to hear um, somebody try it like from scratch and what kind of experience they have. So please do share that whenever you're ready. What's the most uncomfortable cosplay I've ever worn? Definitely my Merlot's costume, which is almost impossible for me to move around in and just like takes constant effort to stand and walk. It's a... Uh, I have um, greaves and full armor on my arms and so I can't even open doors for myself. I can't even like... the struggle to walk or sit. Um, the heels are like super intense. I feel like if I switched out the shoes I would just instantly have a much better time in that costume. But it's been years since I wore it I wore it in 2015 at a contest, um, and that's one of the few costumes that I made a, a matching couples costume for my ex-husband, and so I have to decide what to do with that one. I thought about making that costume into, like, swapping it for a female version that I can wear, or maybe I'll just sell it, I don't know. It's another one of those things that, uh... That's another one of those things that's like, do I get rid of something that reminds me of, you know, a situation that has turned negative, or do I get to enjoy my own hard work for something that I, you know, really cared about at the time? And I don't have the answer to that yet. I'm still <laughs> figuring out what I'm going to do with that, but I'm definitely at a point where I want to clearance out more of my old costumes, definitely more of the, um, the like less worn ones for sure because I'm just trying to downsize my whole life I want to get rid of things I'm not using and I definitely don't go um, to as many conventions as I used to so Denks Ven says cast it into the fire Mr. Frodo <laughs> I mean I like the costume though it's a beautiful full leather outfit I think it looks pretty awesome 
gotta get that cash. You can enjoy your hard work by making money out of it. That's another good option, but you know, sometimes I just want to take nice photos for myself um, to honor the work that I did before I get rid of it. Unfortunately, so the costume that I'm talking about now is Sydney Lostero from Vagrant Story. And that is a male character that is shirtless. So I can't wear it without updating the design. <laughs> um, the chest is totally exposed. So I thought about making like a female breastplate and just wearing that with it and keeping everything else the same. Um, but I don't know, I haven't done that yet. And so that's the, that's the hold up. Like I would fit into the rest of the costume, the armor and I think the pants and stuff would, would fit me fine. But I can't just like bust it out and instantly wear it. I have to, I have to update it to cover my womanly bits <laughs> before I can cosplay this character. Thank you so much, the Spark Nasty saying that they're super proud of how far I've come since we first met. Thank you. Me too. Maybe add a skin tone sweater. I don't think it would look as good. <laughs> um, I think it'd be cooler to just be like, here's a matching breastplate and I am this character and I didn't change anything else. I'm just covering my boobs. Hire a stud. Oh my gosh, that's a good idea. Hire a stud. There are tons of models out there that would take pics for almost free just for their portfolio. <laughs> well, I, don't, I would, I don't know if I would expect them to work for free, but I like this concept of like, just hire a stud. Stud for hire. Yes, Mr. Stud, would you please wear this? <laughs> I'd have to find an exceptionally skinny stud to fit into this outfit. Get a real stud. <laughs> I just like this terminology. Stud for hire. Do I just Google stud for hire? In search of one stud must wear pant size extra small uh, and be willing to pose in some leather armor for me. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep um, on the lookout for that in the future. Perhaps I will find the stud to model these costumes and then get rid of them. <laughs> uh, Kalanimo says, I feel like stud for hire would result in some real funky Google resorts results. I agree. I don't want to send the wrong message out there into the world. I don't want the stud to believe that I have uh, <laughs> ulterior motives. So. That might be something that I have to figure out over time. Hmm. I'm just reading your comment, Prinny, talking about ways to apply whatever skills you have and the current trends, what people want. Yeah, that's something I'm still figuring out for myself. Like, I would like to be just working on craft stuff full time. I mean, that's what I'm doing right now, but I'm still in a, I'm still figuring out my future and what direction I'm gonna go. <laughs> Stealth Slug says, I took one for the team and Googled it, meaning stud for hire. <laughs> and the search results are exactly what you would expect. Thank you, Stealth Slug, for doing that for me. I am now convinced that I don't need to Google stud for hire, and I will simply be on the lookout for the right stud in the future. <laughs> Hi, Rainfish, welcome. Geeky Trash is like, I knew you could count on one of those super slugs. That's right, thank you, Stealth Slug. <laughs> you are also for hire. <laughs> stealth Slug for hire. Hire a Kyle, they'll do it for monster drinks. I'll consider that. <laughs> Needed one Kyle. We'll pay, we'll be compensated in monster energy drinks. 
must fit into these pants and not ask too many questions. I'm trying to hire a stud to get in these pants. <laughs> I should probably phrase it better than that. Yay, we're almost to the end of another row and I'm gonna pause and see how much more I'm gonna add. I keep finding plant material in this yarn. <laughs> this has the most like grass matter stuck in it compared to any other yarn I've used. Talking about the, the blue one, but whatever, it's easy to get rid of. <laughs> How am I so fast? I'm not even that fast. No, but thank you, thank you, sorry, I'm not trying to discredit your comment. Um, I feel like this is still slow. If you watch people who are like experts at crocheting, they go crazy fast, much faster than me. So I watch their videos and I think, oh, how do they do that so fast? Um, somebody else in a previous stream was like, crocheting is watching your hands do a dance that they've already learned. Yes, Shy Turtle, this is going to be a hood. How do I keep getting grass in my yarn? I don't. It comes in it. <laughs> the yarn is made out of wool. So the sheep, the sheep that made this wool were the ones that got the grass into it. It wasn't my fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> it's those sheep. It's those sheep that won't stop rolling around the grass outside. Being sheep, eating grass. Just kidding. I love sheep too. Sheep are very amazing. And uh, the process of harvesting wool from them, when it's done ethically, is positive for the sheep too. So I really enjoy wool. I think it's a great material to work with. It has a lot of really nice properties. Um, yeah. The sheep get kisses for their wool sometimes. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do at least this other row and then I'll stop and see whether I wanna keep adding rows to it or not. You want some Yeti wool? That would be impressive. When you find a Yeti that you can shear for its wool, let me know. And uh, send me the wool. And I will do a Yeti knitting stream. I would love to go to New Zealand to see the hobbit holes and the sheep. Hey, Katie Cat, you finished your sweater back? That's exciting. I'm glad that you were able to push through and get that, get that milestone done. Sometimes the needle just gets stuck. I need a water break. Much better. I gotta stay hydrated for my intense crochet day. Hi, Amadura. Thanks for joining us. Glad we could hang out. Yeah, so many of my friends have been to the Hobbit Holes in New Zealand. Luckily, there's like a knockoff Hobbit Hole. It's not too far from where I live. Uh, I went there last summer and took some photos that were really fun. Dressed up in my little Hobbit costume. Um, so... It's nice to have. It's a place called Brothers Greenhouses and it's up here in the Seattle area. It's not actually near where I live, um, but it's kind of on the other side of the, the bay. Is that what they call it? It's not even a bay. The other side of the sound. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a real Seattleite. 
but it's a very very cool place and I, they let you do photo shoots there they don't care it's just like a greenhouse nursery and um, they have their very own hobbit hole in the backyard and you can just show up take some photos in your hobbit costume and then be on your merry way and they're, they're cool with it so that's what I did last year I would love to go and do that again. But I've got so many elf costumes to wear. It's hard to pick. Which mythological creature will I be today? I wonder how long this little ball of yarn is gonna last me before it gives out. I do have another ball of this stuff, but I don't want to end up having a, a seam line knot right in the middle. We'll see how it goes. If you're uh, hanging out with us right now, doing your own knitting or crochet project, don't forget to give us updates on how your stuff is going that keeps me motivated as well. Keep adding more rows, more stitches. I'm excited for the springtime because once the weather finally starts cleaning, clearing up here, I'll have more opportunities to go out exploring the woods and the gardens and potentially doing phot photography and stuff, although have all kinds of stuff in mind. I'm ready to see the sun again too, stealth slug. Springtime here in Washington is just exceptionally beautiful. Um, and they have uh, so many plants blooming and things and the, the colors are gorgeous. So I'm excited to see it again. Spring is still like six to eight weeks away. You should get pocket Wi-Fi and take us out walking through the forest, if I could. I know you can do, um, I think you can stream from your phone now. I don't know what it would take. Um, I don't know what that would be like, but I could try it. I could see about going on a forest walk in the park with a stream going on my phone. I've seen some interesting streaming setups where people have done like, there's one guy who's like hitchhiking right now <laughs> across Europe. Um, another guy that I was watching drove his stream through a car wash where it's like a camera mounted on his dashboard. <laughs> I think it's a Streamlabs one. There's an app, okay. Well then, I will see if that's uh, in the realm of possibilities for the future. That would be really fun to do a We're Walking Around the Wilderness Now stream. Texas can't make up its mind if it's winter or early summer. Well, I know how that goes. I spent 26 years in Texas <laughs> and those are some wonky weather patterns. At least here in Seattle it's pretty consistent. You generally know what you're getting. Kalanimo says the Twitch app will let me stream straight from it. I think so. Um, I just gotta make sure that the signal is strong enough, but I could try that. Have I ever walked Aries outside before? Yeah, he hates it. <laughs> I tried it just long enough to discover that he hates it and is not going to cooperate. We're in a fall spring here. Yeah, um, it's been really nice and cozy for these last few days in Washington. And then supposedly there's like potential snow on the radar for this weekend. And I'm just like very annoyed by it because I would love to get um, warmer weather in here and start just like being cozier, I guess. It feels harder for me to 
keep working like especially at night when it gets really cold I just want to go curl up in my room rather than uh, deal with the cold <laughs> all of America sounds kind of cursed <laughs> eh, you're not far off you can use the Streamlabs app your alerts will still pop up okay oh that makes sense because I would need you need those alerts I mean I guess I don't know So yeah, that would be something for me to attempt for sure. I'd probably do that on a weekend or some time where I don't have like a normally scheduled stream and just kind of do it as a surprise experimental thing because chances are it'll get messed up. <laughs> I'll give it my best, but you never know. But the woods in this area are very beautiful and very nice to walk through. So a spooky hiking stream in a haunted forest does sound fun. Thanks. Thank you, Zippity. I'm almost to the end of this yarn. I'm gonna have to go grab my second yarn ball. I don't think I'll make it to, well, I guess it's still going. I may make it to the end. We can tell each other spooky stories in the chat while I'm walking around the forest. That could be fun. I don't know of any haunted forests near me, but there are definitely some regular forests that we could pretend are haunted. <laughs> you know what? Forget I said that. Uh, we're definitely going to a haunted forest. <laughs> I'll just walk through a regular forest and make up a bunch of stories about how it's haunted while we walk. Perfect. I will personally haunt the forest, and so therefore any forest that I go to will be haunted by definition. Be the ghost you wish to see in the world. I like that attitude. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to wear some sort of like pseudo elf get up. <laughs> Not really, but I do that every now and then when I'm with friends mostly. It's like, let's go be elves in the forest. Let's go walk around, but like cutely <laughs> dressed as elves. I'm Heidi the friendly ghost. The elf ghost. Come visit Vancouver Island and Kelsey will take me to Cathedral Grove. It's full of some of the world's biggest and oldest redwoods and it's totes haunted. Well, that sounds exciting. I'll consider that. Thanks for the invite. But yeah, I do think that walking through the forest streams would be a very cool and different way to add something else to this channel that's uh, still on brand, as they say. I'm totally gonna make it to the end of this row. That is exciting. And I can tie off and get a new yarn here. Or I could just call it quits because we are getting pretty far on this. I'm gonna take a second at the end of this row to slap it back on my head and see what I think about the size and shape. You've been to Cathedral Grove and it's super beautiful. Well then, I've got multiple uh, invitations or recommendations then that's good <laughs> almost died in haunted woods all caps gone wrong not clickbait yeah that'll make a great video title thanks <laughs> thanks for the suggestion that clickbait title for those extra views walking in a haunted forest question <laughs> mark get ready <laughs> Hey, Fatulous Faze, welcome. Okay, I'm right at the end pretty much. I still have to add my second half double crochet to make that slant. Okay, cool. And now this is how much yarn I have from this whole ball. It's just that amount. 
<laughs> nice. Okay. So let's see how we're doing on this now. We've got it. The last one I made was basically like almost square. This one slants, so it's not going to be a true square, but it feels like we're almost there in terms of like the width being similar to the height from the back. So this is really like a matter of taste. We'll swap back over to other cam face cam. This feels good. Feels like enough hood. It's enough hood, right? I'm just checking in with the chat now. Okay. So this is where we got to. This definitely feels like enough because I'm also wearing a hat under here too. So I had to devise a closure for this still. But this actually fits pretty beautifully in terms of like smoothly sitting down around the head and the pattern. Thanks guys. Same, that's a good hood. That's a good hood. Okay, well I think I'm done with the main body of the hood then. And I'm gonna go ahead and tie off my yarns. Maybe I should have just tied this one off now that I'm looking at it. Nah, we're gonna figure this out. It'll be good, don't worry. Nah, I'll make it good. Okay, so to cut this off, I need scissors. <laughs> um, bye. Goodbye. Oh, I'll swap my cameras back overhead. Now you can see what's going on. So a little knot right there. I snipped, that's right. It's a very, very final snip, although I could always just add more if I wanted to. Um, so those ends will need to get woven in. This is where I was gonna continue my crochet like down, sorry. This is why I still had my other color attached so that I could keep stitching down here. So let's do that. Back to, back to twerk. And these are single crochets that I was doing. Question, do I want this or do I want to keep doing, do I want to do a trim in this other color? So I only have this much of the blue left at all. When I get done with this little ball of blue, then I will have zero more of this type of yarn. But I have a second ball of that one. Time to go to the yarn cauldron. Here's our yarn cauldron once again. Here's my additional ball of same yarn. I also have this one. That should be a separate project though, but I really like this one. Yarn cauldron has been called upon. <laughs> hi y'all. Uh, hi carve nerds. We're, uh, we're having our little crochet day today. I bought this up in Bellingham from a place called Rag Finery that is one of my favorite stores because they sell, um, they sell recycled materials. So you can donate fabric to the store, which I have done. Um, they take anything that's like over a certain, I think like a one foot square. <laughs> Yarn cauldron in Japanese, thank you. Um, so, you can, they'll sell like high quality or any quality really different um, items. My real question is, do I want a border of pink on the bottom or do I want a border of blue? I only have this much blue left. I might be able to get like another row or two out of it. 
but I have a lot more pink that I can. Oh, I need to have some kind of, I didn't add any buttonholes to this one so far. <laughs> pink, pink, pink. Everyone wants pink. Or modern maker ninja wants, wants pink. A lot of people think pink. Okay. So I gotta decide if I'm gonna continue this. Yeah, I'll take this just to the corner, even though it might be a little bit odd. Whatever, I'm the one making decisions. I get to decide. <laughs> I get to decide if it's odd looking or not. I'm gonna own it. I mean, I'm not gonna, I guess I could literally own it. What I mean is I'm owning my decision. <laughs> That's more like it. All right, so now, Do I want that though? Am I? <laughs> this is just my decision making session right now. So this is the front of the hood. We can imagine that we're somebody's head. Here's a little face right here. <laughs> and uh, so with that in mind, hood closure is gonna be down here. So I can continue these little stitches to the end, or I could just leave it off. And I guess I could have just cut my yarn there. I do agree with uh, the majority of voters from the chat who say that um, a pink border would be really nice. Um, so with that in mind, I guess I'll give this one a little clip and then start stitching pink on again. Oh well. What am I doing for a closure? I don't know. I'm figuring that out right now. <laughs> yeah, I have buttons. Oh, you know what? Let me pull out some buttons so that I know what size to do things. These are yet another thrift store find where I just got a big old bag of matching buttons um, and they have flowers on them and they're super cute. And yeah, these are going to look great with this these colors. So here's the button design where it's like floral button. So buttons will be added. The last time I did one of these, I basically added a pretty thick border to the bottom and just let that hang off the bottom. So I could still do that. Let me, let me tie off my other things here since I'm making these decisions. It's gonna be a final cut decision. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. So If I add more here, then it's going to bunch up around the shoulders. Or I could just have an overlapping panel that shows up and just like covers. I think having an, a bottom border would actually be nice though, because we've established the length and the, um, it's just going to make the hood roomier, which is fine. Can make two thicker loops to do the buttons that they loop in the middle. I could, I could do that for sure. Can never go wrong with unnecessary zippers. Asks Forever Twenty One, or ask uh, Tetsuya Nomura, <laughs> the Final Fantasy slash Kingdom Hearts designer. 
is a big fan of unnecessary zippers. A big hood is even better. It's the kind of hood you like. I agree. I do really like the shape here. I just did a much better job overall <laughs> in figuring that out. I guess I could also undo my last row of stitches that I just, just closed off. Cause that would give us an even more consistent bottom row. I was thinking that I would end up doing that with the blue, but now that I've decided on a pink bottom border, I'm actually undoing the part that I just tied off. You guys want to see me undo some crochet stitches? It's okay. It's not sad. I'm not sad. Sometimes it happens. All right, back to the overhead view. All right. All you have to do to undo these is get your knot out and then start pulling. I think. What did I do here? Okay, yeah, there we go. So I'm only going to do this single row of single crochets and I'm going to redo it with the pink yarn. So that is, that is the executive decision for how I'm going to make this bottom section look more even and nice. So I have reached my conclusion. And all it takes is just a little bit more stitching. All right, and now this is where the real tie off will happen. Wait, that was. Oh no, I do want that stitch. Ah! <laughs> I undid one too many. Maybe not. I don't know what's happening. I guess that one was fine. Okay. Not time. You guys get to see all of my like mistakes when I'm streaming. Hopefully that's like reassuring in its own way is that I don't always know what I'm doing. Um, you just gotta figure it out. Oh, I guess this was a single crochet. That's why it's weird. Okay. I had done a single crochet there and then I let it continue. And now, boop, goodbye. And that will just get blended into the rest. Okay. So in order to not waste the rest of my pretty blue yarn, I'm just going to tie these two together so that the next time I need this, it's already just connected and it's all one piece. Imagine knowing what you're doing. Can't relate. <laughs> I like halfway know what I'm doing and then I just fill in the rest of it. And creativity, <laughs> spontaneity, figure it out as you go. All right. So now my blue is all wound up and set aside. My pink is going to be, we're going to start fresh with the next bundle of pink, which means I got to pull it out of the butt. I think, I don't know how people do this like accurately all the time, but there's, so you want to pull the yarn out from the inside, firmly grasp it. It's so hard. Okay. Well, I'm glad that other, so you just start rooting around in there. You start fingering your ball of yarn until you eventually pull out the right piece. <laughs> you always pull out a big ball. So the point of doing it from the out, sorry, doing it from the inside instead of the outside is that you get a better and more consistent pull, but this ball is already like coming apart on the outside. Should I just bite it and be like, well, I'll do it from the outside instead. Da -da, da -da -da -da. 
All right, everybody in the chat is like, oh, I always pull out like half of the yarn. You just gotta firmly grasp it and then give it a big old prolapse and just pull out all of the innards. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this has already turned into a mess. I guess if you wanna see me struggle and flail, you come to the right stream. I'm just gonna keep disemboweling this yarn until I pull out the right chunk of it eventually. I've just got like a big old... <laughs> it doesn't seem like a good idea. Firmly grasp it. You turn your skeins into balls because you hate skeins. I agree and I have a, I have one of those windy tools. I've got a yarn winder too. So worst comes to worst, I can do that. You know what, I'm just gonna start working on it from the outside because I'm frustrated with this and I'm not gonna, I haven't found the correct way to do it yet. Okay. I guess I'll just tie these together and start from there. That'll work. Is it cold there? Um, ask some guy. Just some guy tan. Uh, it's semi-cold. It's not really cold. Uh, it's warmer than it has been in a while right now, but it's apparently not gonna last. I should probably not have overzealously added that additional knot, but we're gonna we're gonna work it out. It'll be fine. Don't worry. That's my crafting attitude. I'll figure it out. It'll be okay. Ugh, I hate having a knot right at the end. We're gonna come back for you, buddy. We're gonna make things better. Don't you worry, little guy. You're gonna get hidden. You'll be hidden in the end. You'll be fine. You know, I'm just talking nonsense to my yarn. Oh, okay, so I'm going to turn this actually with another half double crochet. That's, that's where we're going. So last time I did a whole row of single crochet before jumping into my uh, half doubles, which I just, <laughs> just kind of accidentally went back to. What do I want? What do I want from life and from crochet? That's the big question that we're always tackling on this stream. Well, right now I just want a nice row of single crochet stitches. <laughs> Rip. I'll get there. Yeah, this is correct. I hate that this one like got squished over because this is the same spacing as everything else but it looks like there's a hole. Hi Sam Jackson lover, welcome to the stream. And St. Lydia as well who says gorgeous colors, thank you. I'm a... <laughs> My knot came out. <laughs> you know what, that's fine because it gives me an opportunity to tie the knot at a less exposed place. Goodbye <laughs> knot. Uh, <laughs> now here's how I'm going to fix that. I'm going to undo some stitches this way. I'm going to retie it way further up here and then the knot will get lost inside the stitches and it won't be sticking out at a really awkward spot right at the end. See? Solutions, they present themselves. 
sometimes you just have to let it get messed up so that you can fix it for real. Cool, now it's on the inside and it's kind of like bundled into that little stitch that you aren't gonna see it. It won't be sticking out right at the corner to draw attention to itself. So, solutions, we've got them. Uh, let's see, hello St. Lydia says, hello, I've been following you forever, but never ever chat, so hi. Hello Lydia, it's nice to have you here. Thanks for joining us and, and saying hello to me today. I appreciate that. Now, I am gonna stick with the single crochet because I think that'll help me establish the row and then I can switch over to the half double, which is what I had before. So, one thing at a time, single crochet row down this way, I'm gonna choose another hole for that. Wrong hole. Perfect. Cool, now we have a much better corner overall and less strife associated with it. I'm also going to leave that one back up. my big ass yarn needle. I'm gonna need uh, a threader for this. Or the Twitch app just closed. But my stream is still going. Hold up. My chat disappeared, but my stream is still on. Why did you do that? This is just a myth. There you are. Okay, you guys are still here. So here's a small piece of thread that I just pulled off of my thread rack because I was struggling with the last one. Okay. No, I'm actually gonna fold it in half and shove it through. So now I have a, a larger loop sticking through this needle. And capture the yarn between the two threads or within the thread loop and use this thread to pull the yarn through the eye of the needle. Boom, now we just threaded yarn through a needle. And I'm gonna shove it back up the crochet in this direction, burying it among the rest. Yay! And now I can trim off the original extra and it'll be just kind of tucked away inside. And while I'm on the topic, I'm gonna to do the same thing on this other side. And yes, my chat is back. I can see you now. <laughs> I don't know why my, like, I have a little tablet sitting right here that I use to watch the conversation in the, in the chat. I don't know why it just like crapped out on me, but at least my laptop didn't stop. And so I'm intentionally like, oops, <laughs> I forgot to thread this. I was like, so focused that I didn't pull the thing through. Whoops. I totally know what I'm doing. See? <laughs> Thank you guys for putting up with me. Yay. Okay. There is a threaded yarn needle. Car of Nerds is asking, hey chat, what is everyone working on? And Stealth Slug says, the art of procrastination. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Painting in Photoshop right now, says Sly Turtle. Shy Turtle? You could be Sly Turtle. I think Sly Turtle would fit in with Stealth Slug and Super Secret Slug. Come 
on, please. What if he just did though? My yarn got like stuck in itself. But what if you weren't stuck? What if you just did what I wanted? Hey! <laughs> got it. Yeah, sometimes you just have to like really show it that you mean it. Goodbye. Extra ties. Yay, now it looks all neat. Where'd they go? I don't know. They're gone. And it is once again time to continue stitching down this row. Yay, and I managed to like close up that weird gape too. You don't want it to gape weirdly. <laughs> you gotta watch out that you don't put it in the wrong hole and it's not gaping weirdly. <laughs> Madame Trash Heap wants to start knitting again. Do it. Do it. So now I've got to determine where I want to, what kind of pattern to establish along this way. Because I'm kind of just finding which spots are going to make the most consistent edge here. I think I got it. Scary Green Mountain is learning how to knit socks. Good luck. That sounds intense. Um, Silex is winding their embroidery threads onto bobbins. That's a good use of your time. Oops. I accidentally did the half double again because I was in that half double mode. Gotta watch your hands. I gotta watch my hands instead of only watching the chat. A lot of people are knitting today. It makes me happy that we have like a virtual knitting circle here on this stream. Maybe I should just start calling it that. Virtual knitting circle. But yeah, I'm going to swap this over to be a regular Thursday project instead of Friday so that I can chill with my friend on Friday. And so streams starting next week, streams are going to be Monday, through Thursday during the day times with no breaks. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see about that. I'm always striving for better consistency, but I got to also figure out what works for me that will allow me to maintain that consistency. I need my coffee. I think I'm gonna actually adjust that. No, like that. No, I guess that was consistent. There's a fair amount of trial and error in projects like this, especially when you're working with your own pattern and you're just like figuring it out as you go. Uh, there's nobody to say this is the one correct way to do it. You have to make those decisions yourself. Has anyone here crocheted their own lace? Asks Clean Noodle. Uh, that's some intense. I think they call that tatting when you're working like with really small, really tiny small size stuff. Um, I've never done it before, but that seems very intense. So if anybody here in the, in the chat has experience, please do share. I'm curious. Modern Maker Ninja says it's hard. No tatting is using a shuttle. All right. Using a hook is still crochet. All right. The more you know. <laughs> That's a... Maybe a future project for me to tackle. I also don't know how to knit. I only crochet so far. I think that I have some knitting needles and I've obviously got the yarn. So that's a future learning process for me. And thankfully I have a, a Discord and a stream community 
filled with talented knitters that can help me troubleshoot. Your mom can do tatting, that's impressive. Yeah, I feel like if I started making my own lace, it would just be like, just always further opening up new rabbit holes for me to fall down where I'm not really continuing to work on the same project, but just like infinitely creating more work for myself. <laughs> I just super love lace. It's gorgeous and I want to use it in most of my sewing projects, but I also need to like limit myself at some point. Like don't make your own lace, Heidi. <laughs> You'll never stop. Project ADD, a little bit. I sometimes get that, not always, but I'm uh, making a concerted effort to see more things through to the finish. So that's what I've been doing largely on this channel, which has been nice. I'm able to use the momentum and inspiration from streaming to like sit down and uh, specifically put time into finishing things rather than just always doing new stuff. I'm not sure how completely even these are, but I guess what really matters is just allowing it to take on the shape it needs. Yeah, that's fine. Is that consistent though? I can't tell. <laughs> Whatever, I'm sure I'm overthinking this. What else have I got? I have quite a few unfinished projects. So I've been spending more time like sitting down and picking up older things and like devoting myself to finishing it. And it's usually not what I'm in the mood for, but uh, you know, that doesn't matter. If you want to make this your job, you can't, you can't rely on your moods. You gotta sit down get to work, clock in, start stitching. So that's where I'm at, is really learning to practice that regularly. Okay, I think this is consistent, I'm just not used to looking at it this way, so ta-da. Do I have any leather working projects on the go? Interesting that you should ask, yes I do. Um, I am going to, well, I'll just say right now, I'm planning a SakuraCon cosplay. I haven't announced it yet because I'm still getting, in, still in the early stages of it and I didn't want to like draw a lot of attention to it until I have something more to show for myself. But um, one of the ways that I'm trying to challenge myself to get back into more complex projects is I will be taking on another cosplay for myself, um, mostly just to get back into the habit. And so I haven't announced it yet, but I'm sure I'll tell you guys first. Uh, good night, Stealth Slug. Have a good rest of your evening. Alright, well, this hasn't been completely consistent, but as long as it lays flat, that's what really matters. So, my next cosplay will have leather armor. Um, I have Zelda projects lined up, and um, some other things. It's a pity you're sleepy, but you don't want to go. You can go. I won't be mad. Care of yourself.
It's only 4 p.m. where you are. So you're in my same time zone. <laughs> I thought that you were like at, also at the end of your night. <laughs> it's 4 p.m. Come on. I say as I slept in all day, not all day, but too late. All right, we're almost done with this row and then I can stop fretting over like inconsistent stitches because we'll be there. We'll be ready to just do regular rows again. Trimmel, you're gonna go to the Goodwill outlet tomorrow. Good luck with that. That place is scary. I mean, I like it there, but it's also scary. <laughs> Yeah, Goodwill outlet shopping is intense. I almost went by the Goodwill today, but then I was like, no, Heidi, you don't need anything. And then I came back and streamed instead. Now, where is... Where's the hole? I found it. All right, and we are pretty much all the way back to this corner the following corner, wait. Mythic Phoenix, you're gonna go to Goodwill and try to snag a cheap sewing machine. Best of luck to you. Now, it is a good idea to get your machine serviced if you buy it secondhand. Like, it's worth it to have somebody look at it, somebody you know, or a professional um, that will know what they're doing and make sure it's like tuned up and ready to go. But that said, used machines can be really nice. You just want to make sure you're starting from a point of like it already being nice and functional so that you don't end up getting something that will contribute to sewing issues. Okay, cool. We made it to the end. Now I'm going to do chain two. Now the turning chain. Yay. And this is how our, that's our very first row of a pink border that's going to grow bigger and longer. Oh, wait. I am actually going to continue the chain. Sorry. This isn't a turning chain. <laughs> Psych. I am going to keep it going and create a section that folds over the other side. I don't even know how many I want to do. This is going to be a flap for the buttons. Two inches is about good. So we'll give it like one more. All right, and now a little turning chain of one. Okay, so I have um, extended this and this bottom section is gonna be like wider basically. Yeah, Americans um, have pretty good thrift stops and thrift stores in general. I actually haven't gone thrift shopping in any other countries before, but um, that's interesting observation that they're apparently, according to to some people from overseas, I guess, say that they are maybe more prevalent here. Okay, so I just did like an extra little turning chain. And this becomes the first stitch in a new row. That will now like stick out as a flap. I'll give you a little, a better view of what I mean by that once I get a little further down this row. spinny ball of yarn 
someday I will get better at pulling that little tail out from the inside. I guess Aries bailed on this stream. He has not come back downstairs. Yeah, there's usually some sewing machines at a, at a thrift store. I uh, go thrifting regularly and I see them there all the time. So you just gotta get lucky, I suppose, and make sure you get one that's nice and functional. But I would definitely prefer like an older sturdy machine over a lot of the new ones these days, to be honest. Uh, he was in the background earlier. He didn't actually like jump up into the, into the mainstream. But when I first started streaming, Aries was like behind me in the window and then he moved on to other things. He had other priorities today. No, okay, that was not the right. I pulled some of the yarn I didn't want through. Let's try this again. Cool, got it that time. with these uh, loopies. What am I saying? I don't know. <laughs> That's the right spot. Okay, so the purpose of this was to create an extra section that will fold over and that will become our button flap. So yay. Now I will continue this row normally and we've just like, ex we've just created an extension. and check it out and make sure it's sitting properly. I think it'll be fine. So, with the closure, this will become an overlap. And then as it continues down, did I add too much space? I think I added too much space. That's quite the button flap. That's a pretty hefty button flap, honestly. We went to almost three inches once I added that extra spot. So I'm gonna actually take some of these stitches out. Do I want it to be vertical or do I want it to be? Hold on, I could actually do a different arrangement. I try to squeeze two buttons on horizontally They might be like too close together if I do that. Hmm. Hmm. No, I'd rather do one and one stacked. So they'll be vertical. So I'm gonna take out some of these stitches and shorten this and try to get them to overlap only as far as this pink section goes. And then it'll be like a corner. Okay, cool. I have a plan. I have a plan. Sometimes that involves undoing stitches and that's okay. Okay, so this is now the turning chain to start over here. Boom. Hey, Madam Trash Heap, thank you so much for the sub. I really appreciate that. Woohoo. Awesome, so great to have you here today. Okay, so starting this over, two stitches in, wait, that was actually one and two. So starting from here, we will begin to continue out that row. Hold on, sometimes like 
you gotta start your turning chain at the right angle or you okay i think it got like all the way twisted around which is not what i want there we go that's going to create a smoother section I know I'm like halfway explaining things while I talk to myself, but hopefully very soon it will all become clear. Madame Trash Heap said that they are happy to be here and I'm happy you're here too. Oops, that is not in the right hole. Wrong hole. Twisting that chain is easy, but luckily we got it under control. last stitch and then we'll be back into the easier section. Cool. All right, that actually looks much better than before just because I didn't have it twisted. So yay, good deal, good progress. And let me do like a couple more stitches and then, then we'll stop and look at it again. Navita Luna is heading to bed. Thanks for hanging out with us. Good night. Enjoy your rest and your weekend now that it's Friday night. Okay. Ta-da. Move that aside. Yay, okay, that's the kind of overlap I was hoping for. So now we get an overlap that is approximately as wide as this pink band here, and then the two buttons will be vertically situated. So we'll end up adding about that much more space onto the whole thing, and then we'll be done. Yay, it's great to have a plan. It's good to have an idea of what you're doing. <laughs> I don't always have that, but right now I do. Okay. So now I begin my normal double crochets for the rest of this row. And I can just fall back into my pattern of muscle memory. I've been doing so many of the half double crochets, I'm gonna end up not remembering how to do every other stitch. That's not true, but you do tend to like uh, make things to just kind of like fall back into the patterns your fingers remember. Is this a hood for a cosplay project or for funsies? Neither. It is a hood for sale in my store. I am working on um, building up my inventory of handmade goods in this style. So that is where this is going to go. That's why. So I'm still like learning and experimenting with patterns and things, but I am intentionally making things that I can um, put up in the store. So that's the goal.
starting to get my pattern going again and I can get my speed up. Uh, anyway, if anybody out there is still working in their own projects, give us an update or if you are just tuning in and you have your own thing going on, let us know what that is. And uh, also, once again, we have a Discord community that is a part of this streaming community where people come together and post their own projects uh, and encourage each other. So if you haven't checked that out yet, um, please do click on the link in my description and we'll see if one of the mods ends up dropping it into the chat like they usually do. <laughs> if not, I can add it. But the Discord community has been a wonderful support system um, for myself and it seems to be for a lot of other people too, which is really nice. Clean Noodles working on a blanket. Carve Nerds is working on a cardigan. It's crochet day or and or knitting night, depending on where you are and what you're doing. <laughs> but yeah, it's really fun to be a part of a collective of crafters, I guess you could say. A craft collective where we can encourage each other and stay on task and have a place to share what you're up to even if you're not really active on like your own social media or something. Okay, I will add a little link in chat. Oh, so now Nightbot has added a link to our Discord community in the chat. If you are not currently a part of that, do yourself a favor and click that link and join. Uh, it's a very wholesome and supportive place where a lot of people share their updates for their craft projects and uh, find new friends and people to keep them accountable, keep them going. It's also been almost a full month of streaming for me, which is really nice, encouraging to see uh, that people are still showing up for these streams, thank you, as well as, um, you know, that I've grown a little bit in my own consistency and being able to sit down and do this each day as much as I can. Hi Miasma, thanks for the follow. You've got your own orange kitty emotes, which is nice. You need the streams zippity. <laughs> they keep you going. You're addicted to them. Uh, InDev says that they're using the last ball of cotton making a trivet. Hey, it doesn't have to be a big thing to be a nice project to take your mind off of things and to be get a little bit of sense of productivity going. I need to make myself some trivets or like little hot pads for food. Clean Noodle says it's been a long while since you've crafted with a group of people. It is indeed lovely. For sure, me too. I used to attend um, knitting nights at a knitting store that I used to live by and then I moved. So. This is my replacement knitting circle, I guess. Your local library does knitting nights? That's cool. Maybe I can go make some knitting friends in person there. Miasma, you like the colors? Thanks, me too. There is a local library. There's also a yarn store near me that's like a specialty yarn store and those are usually good bets for finding knitting groups. Even if they don't have one hosted there, they might have like a little, some information posted perhaps about where I would find that. So yeah, it's a good idea to check the library, find those knitters.
Oh wow, Car of Nerds says that they knit, they knit at a knitting club at the craft store they work at, and one of the ladies there is turning 100 in March. That's pretty cool. I imagine she still knits, which is a really cool way to pass the time when can't do much else, don't have a lot of energy. I support this. She uses a special magnifying glass to see her patterns properly because her eyesight is poor. That's nice. You get a tool for that. Hi, Kelp Self. It says, hello everyone. They've been lurking. You've been in the process of bleaching, bleaching little bits of your hair. Well, awesome. It has a lot of snow how that turns out. Hopefully for the best. I definitely agree that having a pink border was the right call for this project. So for everyone who voted pink, you made the right choice. <laughs> always gets me in the working mood. This is a DJ Cutman, Radio Cutman. There is a link to this in the info box below the stream if you want to listen in your own time. But this this music always gets me going. Keep working hard. All right, we're pretty much back to this corner now. So we've completed one circuit. And here is a turning chain. Oh yeah. Miasma is asking, what other crafts do I do? everything. That's a bit of an exaggeration. Uh, I'm a cosplayer. I'm a seamstress. I do quite a bit of sewing and leather work. Um, I've been doing some embroidery this week. I have picked up crochet in the last year or so. Um, I do painting quite a bit for fairy houses and props. Um, cosplay being like the most like well-rounded because like when you're cosplaying you often do all kinds of other smaller tasks within that so um i primarily describe myself as a seamstress i make patterns and sew costumes it's just been a while since i was like focused on the cosplay aspect of it but as i was saying earlier i want to get back into it i'm planning a new costume for sakura con which is here in washington in april so I have about two months to finish that up. Um, and I'm gonna do a lot of that cosplay work here on the stream, and that will include lots of sewing and leather work. So there's specifically gonna be some leather armor in that costume. I do a lot of original design work too these days. I, that's one of the things that kind of like replaced cosplay for me in terms of how I was spending my time was instead of making other people's, like versions of other people's characters, I started making my own characters, um, which was really satisfying. Over the last couple of years, I put more focus on that. So some of my more recent works have been along those lines. Ah, 
You tried to get into Sakura Khan's Artist Alley, but you're waitlisted. Yeah, I hear that one's really tough in terms of like competition and how many entries they get. You wish you could sew, but beyond mending, you can learn. If you hang out in these streams, you'll probably pick something up <laughs> once I get back to sewing more often. I'm just like starting to concentrate on my work more. <laughs> Running out of things to say off the top of my head. What's the most difficult costume slash cosplay I've made before? I get this question all the time and my answer is always Twilight Princess Zelda. You can look on my website if you want to see it. Um, or I guess I could just drop a link in. <laughs> All right, if you want to see my most difficult cosplay to date, it is in the chat. You can go check that out and see actual photos of me in it. Um, but yeah, I used to do cosplay a lot more hardcore than I do now. And the reason why is just that I had a lot more resources, time, money, support from my uh, ex-husband. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> and so in the last year I've had to kind of restructure my entire life and expectations for who I am and what I do. Um, because it's, uh, that's still an ongoing, ongoing journey, but it's nice to make some progress and feel like I'm getting my stuff together. Yeah, I'm a really big fan of making leather armor. Um, I feel like it's a material that a lot of um, a lot of cosplayers still don't work with, either because of the expense or because of the. It's not a very forgiving material. So if you make a mistake, your mistakes are largely going to be permanent compared to like thermoplastic or things that you can keep filling and sanding. Um, but I love it. In terms of durability and like high quality finish, I feel like there's no comparison to other materials. So I uh, hope to do more leather working streams in the future. Um, and that's one of the purposes of me tackling another costume, cosplay costume, is to be able to uh, create more leather working tutorials and um, examples. So, thank you Kelp Self says that the lace applique is beautiful. I did a whole tutorial on that. So, um, elsewhere on that website, I have a whole section of tutorials, uh, a blog that's dedicated to showing off the details of some of my other projects. Um, and that used to be like kind of my full-time thing where I was really focused on cosplay and costumes and so I'm, at, I'm now in a place where I can't focus on it nearly as much. Um, I need to be more productive in creating my own income uh, and so that's why I focus on stuff to sell and stuff for my store instead of having the luxury of just making costumes all the time. Um, so I feel like some people I don't know, maybe I haven't done a good job of explaining that, but it's weird. It's weird going through like life changes and having to like take a step back on all of my own projects in order to accommodate that. 
Your wife hijacked your computer and was browsing on Twitch for the first time and stumbled upon my Twitch and instantly fell in love. That makes me happy. Tell her hey. <laughs> so I was chatting with her this whole time. <laughs> And I've now, this channel has now convinced her to join Twitch. Well, if she's looking for a username, we have a, a slug theme going on. <laughs> uh, I think our stealth slug, I think our slugs um, slipped out. She's more into gnomes. Good on her. We, we're, we love fake creatures of all kinds. And snails. <laughs> That's really cute. Well, tell her, hey, and I'm glad that you're interested in Twitch now. Um, I do this Monday through Thursday is going to be my new consistent schedule. So I know it's a Friday and I'm streaming right now, but I'm about to swap it up and uh, plan to do Monday through Thursday streams with maybe some potential bonus weekend streams even every now and then. Uh, earlier today, the chat was recommending that I go out into the woods and stream from my phone while I walk around. I have to make sure that the internet connection is strong enough for that but I think it would be a very fun streaming concept if, uh, if, if it works, if it like the physically works out. She's a pro at gel nail, gel nails. That's awesome. I wish I knew more about nails. Snails. If she likes snails and nails, uh, there, we got a, we've got a nickname for her all right there. Snail Nails can be her channel. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I imagine she's going to make whatever she wants, but this is my, my imagination version of what your wife's username and channel will be. Snail Nails, where she sits and uh, does nails on her stream, and then uh, everything is snail stream snail themed so she can have snail graphics and snail <laughs> just just pitch that idea to her see what she says <laughs> okay now is it time yet no it's it's almost time it's not time yet for buttonholes <laughs> You know how snails have one foot snail with pedicure? <laughs> Thanks for coming to my TED talk. I don't know if I understood that, but cool. <laughs> snail nails. You can do a snail themed nail design where you do like some snail nail art <laughs> and then use that as your channel images. Go. <laughs> Well, if she's joining Twitch, you should also in invite her to join our Discord community where all of these artistic kind of conversations keep going after the streams and, um, and it's an open community for everybody who enjoys this type of work and chatting with each other. <laughs> Thank you, Miasma. Miasma. That'll be fun. We're happy to have new people joining us all the time. If snails have feet, do they have toes too? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. And now I want to see like an anthropomorphic snail that has snail nails. Okay. One more of these stitches and then I'm going to do my buttonhole. So there's that overlap, here's that button. I'm only gonna do, a, do a two. Uh, so instead of continuing to attach things to this row, I'm gonna chain two, and then I'm going to skip those same two stitches and continue on like, nothing happened. Like I'm going to continue the row normally. Let me show you what that looks like. 
And then we'll have to test the button and make sure it fits, but I think that three stitches is too much, so it's gotta, it's gotta be two. All right, but now I have effectively created a little slot where the button will slip through. Oh, perfect. Perfection, awesome. And now I just continue the row as normal. Yeah, this would be, I hope I can finish this on stream today. I don't know, I said I wanted to crochet with wire too, but now I'm on a roll and we voted for the pink trim and uh, you guys made the right decision. Just opening this up again. very productive week for me. It always kinds of goes ups and have a lot of ups and downs um, as I'm trying to like reestablish myself. Um, but I feel really good about the progress I've made in this room as well as progress that I've made on you know, items from my store. Uh, gotta do a lot more photography. That'll be my weekend project. Um, doing photography of new products, including this hood if I get it finished, and other things that I finished this week, including my little embroidery projects. Um, and maybe next week sometime I'll announce my cosplay project. No promises. You gotta keep a little bit of suspense. I don't know. I doubt anybody really cares, but... I'm sure some people will be excited to see me come back to cosplay after all this time. Surely someone. My friends. I got roped into this cosplay group by some local friends, which is very exciting because I didn't, I did not already have any plans for SakuraCon. And then after my friends were like, please join this group, we want all these, all these other characters. And I was like, yes, I'm in. Cool designs and friendship, I'm in. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Katie Cat was asking, am I gonna stream my cosplay progress? Yes, that cosplay is gonna be made mostly on stream, if not entirely on stream is the goal. Um, so I've got these two industrial sewing machines sitting behind me that you might be able to see. This is Juki number one and Juki number two. I never, I was gonna name them. Here's my. My craft room is behind me. I have two industrial jukies. One of them is a um, basic kind of workhorse machine that I do all of my um, main stitching on. And the other one is a heavy duty leather stitching machine that is much, much um, more powerful that is able to stitch through like a lot of really thick materials. And um, so my I guess the, the hints I'll give in my project are, um, it's going to be a project, it's going to be a project that incorporates armor and fabric together, and I will end up, um, stitching some heavy duty leather stuff together to make the top, uh, where the armor and the, the fabric is kind of like attached to each other. Plague Bearer says, I spy a yarn cauldron, that's right. Behind me on this side, I have the yarn cauldron, my giant cauldron full of yarn. And behind that, behind everything, I have several different dress forms and a bunch of different bins and boxes of patterns, boxes of fabric and ongoing materials. So 
my cosplay work kind of just got put on pause about, I guess, a little over a year ago. <laughs> the Yarn Cauldron from episode 124. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you, Zippity. Uh, so all of that stuff is still right here, waiting to be waiting to be used in my next projects. Um, and as I said on Twitter the other day, like, I feel like I've gotten kind of out of practice. I went through some life stuff um, over the last two years or so. Oh, thank you, Modern Maker Ninja. Thanks for the bits. Yay. I appreciate that. And is that a little corgi? I think that's a little corgi emote. That's really cute. Um, but my workspace is really coming together. Oh, I thought about swapping the positions of my sewing machine so that my main machine would be right behind me. And if I did that, it would be easier to stitch with it on stream. Um, I don't know. I also have one more webcam that I can just position on or around it. Maybe like mount the camera straight onto the machine itself, perhaps. And then have a little bird's eye view of what I am crafting. We'll see. But that's something, yeah, I'm basically working my way back up to doing more ambitious projects. And so with the goal of um, feeling more confident in accepting commissions in the future, because uh, that's something that has been a possibility, but I don't feel like I want to be able to um, present myself with confidence as a professional. Um, and I need to feel like I have a little bit more recent practice, <laughs> I guess, before I start offering that service to others. So I'm going to do at least one costume for myself, get back in the habit, start, you know, remind people what I can do <laughs> with costumes, remind myself what I can do with costumes, and then uh, ideally get to a point where I will be able to work on that more often. And so that stuff will happen on streams. Um, you know, I'm not going to be hiding that work away or anything. I don't have any paywall uh, platforms right now. I'm just using Twitch to show off what I've got going on. So that will, if you're if you're tuning in here, you'll be sure to see it. Um, I'm just taking some time to work my way back up to that type of um, that type of work. Plague Bearer says that they are excited to get down to their goal weight so I can start trying cosplays. I have the same response to that, because that's a very common sentiment, is, that, is this statement of like, I want to lose weight so I can start cosplay. And my response to that for everybody is that you should just start cosplaying at whatever weight you are at right now. Um, because it is not difficult to make things smaller, um, but it is difficult to make things bigger. Um, and honestly, I feel like for most people, I don't know if there is like a, yeah, cosplay is for anybody, um, for anybody in any body, any size, you can enjoy making the craft as well as wearing the outfit. Um, and I understand that for some people it's a confidence issue and they don't want to do it until they might feel like more ready or something. Hi there, Kale Tornado. Um, but... I think that it can create uh, an arbitrary hurdle of like, oh, well, I can't cosplay until I achieve this other thing. Um, that, you know, obviously it's going to be a personal decision. You, you can do it at whatever stage you feel ready and that somebody else just telling you to go for it isn't the same thing as feeling ready and being able to just start doing it. Um, but that, uh, to let go of the idea that you need to change before you can cosplay. Um, because for a lot of people, you know, that, you know, whether it does or does not happen in the future shouldn't be the determinant of whether or not you're enjoying your hobbies of, um, of cosplaying. And I used to, um, I have a degree in theater. Can I be your mommy? No, absolutely not. I'm not your mom. <laughs> um, uh, when I was working in theater, or when I was in a, when I was a student in theater, uh, I 
frequently, one of the things we frequently hear from actors, like every single production, multiple actors would make the statement of, oh, I'm gonna lose weight for the show. I got cast as such a such character, but this isn't the size that I'm gonna be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose weight before the show. And our answer to that is always, okay, you know, feel free. It's, e it's easy to take things out instead of, um, it's, sorry, it's easy to take things in rather than let things out, but we still need to make a costume that fits you now. Um, and then whether or not that actor actually lost any weight is neither here nor there because our job was to make a costume that fit them right then. So, um, so that was the kind of attitude that we learned to develop as well as to encourage the actors and say like, you know, wanting to make whatever changes for yourself is always, you know, it's generally a positive thing and I don't want to discourage anybody from like, um, from setting a goal and then working to meet it. But at the same time, like, you know, you got cast as you are and you can cosplay as you are. And, uh, there's no need to make things more difficult or more stressful or believe that you're not able to do it now. Um, because you are. And so I hope that that idea can stick with you. Can I cosplay as your mom? No, sorry. <laughs> I doesn't want to be, I don't want to be your mom, dude. <laughs> I'm not anybody's mom. I'm just Aries mom. Plague Bearer says that makes sense. Mostly just noticed that a lot, of a lot of cosplaying 101 says like try simple costumes that you can buy most of the stuff pre-made and then it's hard to find stuff in your size. That makes a lot of sense. Um, but you can still like do cosplays via like Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm uncool, but I'm not your mom. So that's the end. <laughs> uh. Well, I hope that you um, end up with a solution that you're happy with, but I hope that you aren't discouraged from trying or enjoying things that you might like. That's the, the moral of the story. On camera, the blue almost looks green. Yeah, maybe so. My cameras don't necessarily have great color balance, but. Well, cool, Plague Bear. I hope that you are able to find a costume design and availability that you might want to try out with your first steps into the cosplay world. I'm definitely, definitely rooting for you. Clean Noodle says, I'm a big fan of a casual cosplay, something that looks like a character, but is also a comfy day outfit. Heck yes. Um, it's usually like my Sundays at a convention, if I'm cosplaying at all at a convention, I'll like wear like a hangover costume. Cause you know, Saturday night is the party night. <laughs> and then you wake up on Sunday and you gotta check out of your hotel room and bleary eyed and exhausted. Um, and, uh, you know, it's good to be able to do that <laughs> dressed as whatever character. That sounds awesome. I'm just like checking in on the chat. People are talking on different cosplay projects that they've done or their friends have done. Oh yeah, Car of Nerds has a good um, tip, which is that there's tutorials online that can show you how to like copy patterns from clothing from one to another. Like one, um, like you can copy an existing pair of pants or an existing shirt and make your own from that. So even if you don't have like a perfect sewing pattern ready, you can kind of develop that and create it based on your, um, based on clothes you already have in your closet. And that's really nice too, because you can, uh, end up learning a lot that way. <laughs> Now everyone's offering to bite off the haters for Plague Bear. <laughs> I think it'll be fine. 
And I definitely encourage cosplay and community. Cosplay as you are. You don't have to fix yourself before you're ready for cosplay. You can cosplay right now. Oh, I'm starting to starting to feel like it might be dinner time soon. I'm so close on this though. I'm gonna keep going. I did bring a snack down this time. <laughs> I'm glad you're feeling the love, Plague Bearer. Cause yeah, I think that the internet itself can be a very hateful and <laughs> difficult place, but I have generally had really positive experiences at cons. Um, people aren't nearly as mean in person. Uh, so if you are, um, you know, going to conventions and stuff, it's really not that difficult to run into people who have similar interests and who are going to enjoy your costume, even if it's not like the most perfect or high quality thing ever, or if you're not like sewing at a professional level or whatever, you, you will still find like-minded people who are um, gonna enjoy what you have, what you brought, so. Your cauldron isn't big enough for all the yarn, get a bigger one. Exciting to get this thing done soon. And I've already got my one buttonhole down. So we're like in the home stretch right now, the last few rows to make buttonhole number two and the very bottom of this hood. going on three hours not bad I'm slowly getting better at more long-term streams putting more time into that at first it was like hard for me to even just sit here and chat but I'm getting better at streaming yay <laughs> five day stream here we come no thank you I feel like even getting past the two hour mark for me is a big deal. <laughs> Baby steps, I will gradually become a better streamer. An actual cast iron cauldron is your big wish. I mean, that's pretty cool. It'd be a cool thing to have. One day at a time, that's right. You know, a month ago, I was terrified by streaming, and I'm way past that, so that's really good. I would have to hype myself up just to go live at all. So, I've gotten a month of practice under my belt, and I'm a lot more consistent um, in being able to keep working and go live most weekdays. <laughs> Still adjusting the schedule to kind of meet myself where I am. Carve nerds, thank you. You said I've been doing a great job. I mean, I'm doing at least okay.
But yeah, I have made a lot of progress. And so even on days when I feel down or whatever, I can look at that progress and think like, wow, a year ago I was miserable and not able to do any of this. And you know, six months ago, I was still like a shell of a human. <laughs> uh, and today I am crocheting, interacting with people, um, making my own food, cleaning up my house, you know, taking my work area really seriously, uh, getting actively working every day at improving my habits, improving my, um, improving my ambitions, I guess, and like taking myself seriously as a, as a craft person, working toward those goals. Uh, your wife finally made it. Give her a warm welcome to Twitch Autumn DeMild. Thank you, Autumn DeMild, for the follow. Is that an Autumn DeWild reference? <laughs> Isn't she a photographer? Am I thinking of somebody else? Um, yes, it is. Awesome. Cool. It seems like we have a lot in common then. <laughs> uh, Kelp Self. Oh, oh, sorry, I missed some things. Car of Nerds is saying that I'm the first streamer that you've actually bought a subscription for. Well, thank you. So I really appreciate that. I mean, that does a lot for me. And then also, um, thank you, Kelp Self, saying that I'm doing awesome. It's been wonderful watching me grow more confident online and grow your business. Thank you very much. It's been a while. It's been a long time coming. Oh, uh, Shy Turtle says that I'm the only reason I have Twitch. Well, thanks. In, especially if you're a Shy Turtle, I'm glad that you feel comfortable here and making friends. And everybody welcome Autumn DeMild to the group, our latest, latest uh, new friend here. It's really encouraging to see people. And Kelp Self also made their account just to follow the stream. Well, thank you guys. That's really encouraging. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just like, I don't know if anybody cares about what I'm doing, but I care. And I would be doing it anyway. That's the big thing is like, as far as like crafting and crocheting and stuff, in order to develop this business that I'm working towards, like I would be doing this anyway. I still do this stuff off camera. When the stream ends, I keep sitting here a lot of the time. <laughs> Um, and yet yeah, having the stream makes it that much more enjoyable, a better sense of community and people to interact with. Yes, that was the Chippendale Rescue Rangers theme. You are not imagining it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Everybody is like... There's so much encouragement. Warm welcome. Hi there, Inspector Wells. Welcome. So now that I've gotten two more rows on there, that buttonhole looks a lot more defined. Um, and you can really see that there's like a little slit in here where the button will fit. the yeah it's gonna be a good size it fits in there easily without stretching too much but without being so loose it'll just pop out Whew. I have to take my quick break to pop my bones <laughs> Hey, an anonymous cheerer dropped by with uh, 200 bits. I appreciate that. And the little ghosts, little ghost bits. Thank you so much, anonymous cheer popping by while I'm doing my bone popping, popping by with the bits. <laughs> oh, I love like the little, there's another, an anonymous gifter that will just like swing by and gift subs and that sort of thing is always really fun and cute too. 
I appreciate people who just like are out there being chaotic agents of like uh, generosity, <laughs> I guess. Bone break. Oh no. I don't want to break my bones. Let's not, please. It's real bone popping hours. I think this hood is going to end up being really big. I guess I could always have it just have a single button instead of two, but I feel like two is more secure. We have two points of contact. But whenever I finish this row, I'll throw it back on my head and see how it's looking. Uh, in dev, no, I don't, I haven't really needed to do a lot of blocking, but I have done it before. Um, it's just depends on the project. I think this one is pretty okay, but yeah, it's a good idea to like do blocking, which is what, for those of you who are new to that, it's like a process of, um, stretching it out and making the stitches more even. Um, there's different ways to go about it, but... I must punish the skeleton living inside me. Mm, no, thank you. I need it. I need him. <laughs> him? Her? Whatever. It doesn't matter. You think two would look better too? I agree. I think that two is like the aesthetic that I want. So maybe I'll just make the upper portion of the hood smaller next time. Each, each hood is like an experiment in the sense that um, the details change in like exactly what kind of pattern I put together. Um, so each, each round, even when I'm copying the same type of craft over again, um, there's always changes. It always evolves into a new one. Shy Turtle says, if I've done so much in what seems like a small amount of time. I know, it's exciting. Streams really help the time pass more easily. You have a giant black plastic pumpkin bucket. You can swap your yarn out. You could. I have pumpkin cauldron, sorry. I have yarn cauldron, you can have yarn jack-o-lantern <laughs> or something. Yumpkin. Thanks, Zippity. Crochet is faster than knitting. That's what I've heard. I haven't done any knitting yet, so I don't know. I haven't been able to time myself specifically, but... Um, Crochet seems a bit more straightforward and you can do more like detail work with it, I think. I don't know. I don't necessarily claim to be an expert. I just, I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. Yarn pumpkin would be super cute. I want to see a picture of this when you're done. We've put it in our Discord. I'm glad that the yarn cauldron has inspired so many others. <laughs> Not just to craft, but specifically to store your your yarn in a giant cauldron. It is versatile. Oh, crochet is more versatile. Yeah, I th that's, like, that's what I was trying to say, sort of, is that you can do like detailed shapes, um, you can create all different types of things, where it seems like knitting is more um, useful for like working out full sections of something. Like if you want to make a whole cardigan or a full sweater, what if the pumpkin is made out of yarn and holds yarn in it? Then it's a yarn section. Next question. <laughs> All right, we're almost done with this yarn row, this row, that's what I was trying to say, this extra yarn. 
Uh, we're almost done with this row, or at least halfway down, and then I'll get to try it on again and show off how it's looking with one little buttonhole on there. One thing I really love about this community is how much you guys teach me and then I can just kind of ramble about a topic and then even if I don't have all the answers, someone in the chat usually has new information to add or can correct me if I'm wrong about something. And that's great because I'm I'm not always right. You know, I make mistakes, make mistakes like, you know, almost every stream. Uh, but hopefully that is encouraging to people in that it's not like inaccessible, you know, perfection is not required and I'm not some magical expert that is just always right. It's definitely not true. Um, I'm just doing my best and correcting my mistakes as they, as they happen and I just keep going along, get more practice, get better. So I can do it. You can do it too. Yeah, Car of Nerds says that knitting is is more along the lines of creating a fabric, whereas crochet can be like sculpting sometimes. I agree, because then you can make those like little amigurumi sculptures where you have like make a little creature out of yarn or um, yeah, crochet toys are super cool. I've been crocheting leaves for things. Oh, I can show those off here in a second. make little crocheted plushies or toys or bowls. You can definitely shape crochet, I think, more easily. You super want a crochet katamari? That sounds fun. Like just like an empty katamari, not with any, that hasn't collected anything necessarily. Yeah, my crocheted vines are actually right here. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. Uh, it's kind of curled up because this has not been blocked or anything, um, but I thought about seeing if I can iron it, if that'll help. But these are leaf shapes that are all connected to a vine. An empty katamari with magnets in it so you can attach things? That's cute. Do it, do it. <laughs> I want to see it when it's finished. That sounds really cute. See, like, what a great idea. People are so creative. That would be really awesome. Oh yeah, you could do felted objects as well on a Katamari. You could do that same kind of Oh, there is a pattern already for that? Yes, please. Please do link it. I would love to check that out. To so do a Katamari pattern and then Katamari objects that are magnetized it would be very adorable. It's been a long time since I played that game or any of those games, but it's good stuff. Good stuff. All right, we're almost done to the end of this row and then I can try my little hood on again, see if I like it, see what happens. I like this song, I don't recognize it. Switch version has been your jam. I have a switch, maybe I can get that version. All right, here is the hood so far. I'm gonna swap my cameras. Back to face cam. So having this extra border is actually really nice because then there's not much of a gap. Like whatever clothing I'm wearing, I mean this, the back of my hoodie, you can, my shoulders are exposed, but say I'm wearing like a jacket or something and this would cover me all the way. I could make it a one button affair and just close it. If I go for two buttons, it's gonna double the width of this bottom band. But that wouldn't even be a bad thing either. It would just be like bunchier. I 
What do you think? Can I keep it going? It does fit better. You think it lays nicely how, now as is? I agree. I'm just wondering if I want two buttons. Because I thought that the two button look was going to be a good one. But I also like how it looks right now. And our the band, I guess it's not exactly the same. This is a little bit wider than this, but they're close. And so it's a good look. What about a non-functioning second button? Oh, like just put one button here and then a second button that would be like next to it that doesn't oh and then I could then the person wearing it could decide which button to use like if there's two buttons next to one another if they're like well if it's if it's on this one but it's a little bit snug more snug you can button it on the second button that's a good idea and then you can have the look of two buttons but you only need to like latch one that could be cute. My only thing would be like, it would twist if it only has one button, then it could sit however. But that isn't necessarily a problem. Cool. Well then, if I'm not going to double this, which I really don't want to anyway, if I'm not doubling my length or anything. So blocking, um, will help to like square things up so it won't be bunchy. And so that's something I'll do after the stream. Oh, and I lost a few stitches <laughs> from tugging on it. That's okay, I can fix those really quickly. I agree that I like how this fits. And if I decide to do another version that, you know, I, I decide that I definitely want two buttons, then I'll just adjust, adjust my approach. I'll change either the length of how much I'm adding here. Either I'll change the length of how much I start with over time, or maybe change the angle so that it's not quite as... Please stop. <laughs> Please stop, camera. The camera is like constantly auto-focusing. But here's a better look at the stitches and the colors. When I was talking about how the, the blue has pink in it and the pink has blue in it, I really like how they work together. And this is solid wool, so it's a nice quality material. Okay, yeah, um, Kelp Self was asking, what does blocking mean? Um, and Car of Nerds has a really nice uh, summary saying, you dampen the wool fibers, stretch them, and pin them into the dimensions you need, and you let it dry into shape. And so, yeah, the idea there is that since this edge is kind of wavy, dang it, stop, stop. Here's more light. Is that going to make a difference? Now I just have a light visible in my stream. <laughs> Hello, here's my lamp. Um, but yes, uh, so instead of having this wavy edge, I would be able to dampen it, stretch it, and um, get that to be a little bit more solid. But this honestly doesn't seem like it needs much. It's like a nice, uh, a nice step for really getting like a level of professionalism, I guess, in the finished piece. But let me. Since we are only doing one button hole, and that was decided, let me fix this that started unraveling as I was always throwing it on my head and messing around with it. I will just finish out these last few stitches and then I'll cut it off and show you the final step of like weaving that end back in and then it will be done. I'll stitch the buttons on later, it's fine. Okay, so there's the last crochet stitch. Snipped the line. Got my knot. And now, my needle and my threads. So this is my super large 
yarn needle and I loaded my little thread through it so that I can oops, use this thread to capture the yarn, pull it through the needle, and now the yarn is threaded into the needle. working it back through the crocheted piece. Like so. Come on, please. Sometimes it's kind of reluctant. Oof. Okay. Yay! That is now finished and our ends are all tucked in and hidden and the button will go there on a finished hood. So once that's stitched on, and this is our hood with two buttons for a versatile fit. Cool! All right, I'm gonna call it a stream with that now that we've gotten to our final product. It's exciting to finish something up that I wasn't even sure I would finish today. So it means I have my weekend work cut out for me in making or getting photographs of all of these things so I can add it to my store. And thank you guys so much for hanging out with me during today's stream. Um, it's been a really good one and I feel my confidence and happiness growing with each stream. <laughs> so cheesy, but I do really appreciate the support and just people who come to hang out with me and talk to me while I'm doing these things because it really makes the time pass more quickly and also just helps me um, to build my confidence and, and keep at it. So thank you guys. I will be back, um, back to streaming on Monday and I'm gonna start my Monday through Thursday schedule uh, right after next at the beginning of next week will be Monday through Thursday and I hope everybody has a good weekend and if I figure out how to take my stream walking through the woods with me then maybe I'll try that too but have a good night everybody and good luck with your crafts and don't forget to show up in the discord and let us know what you're working on all right bye